Hello, welcome to Electronics Education. I'm Vincent Chan. Today we are going to continue the lesson on the frequency response of amplifier. Frequency response of amplifier, part two, open circuit time constant method. Here's the common source, MOSFET common source amplifier, titled frequency response of amplifier. So what is the mid-band voltage gain? So you can do this based on the equivalent circuit analysis or analysis by inspection. So if it's analysis by inspection, negative transconductance, GM, the parallel combination of RO, RD, I'm looking at the slide and I hope you too, and RL and times a dividing, a, a factor, the voltage dividing factor between R and R in is this. And so the gain is the 20 log AM is the mid band, but at high frequency will, will, will fall. In the low frequency, the gain will fall also. You see this. This is the, the frequency response in the whole spectrum, whole frequency spectrum. And why? Because the high frequency attenuation, the behavior is dominated, is affected by those internal capacitors, the semiconductors, parasitic capacitors. And the low frequency behavior is affected by those external one, like the coupling CC1, CC2, and the CS. So internal affects the high frequency. And external let the gain fall at low frequency. So now in a high frequency, if you want to ask, if you want to estimate how far, how high the frequency can be pushed. All right. So how far the frequency can, 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 the circuit can be operated, the limit, the upper three decibel cutoff frequency. If you want to have a quick estimation about omega H, then you can employ, you can borrow a very interesting and quick approximate, uh, approximation method called open circuit time constant. The open circuit time constant. Let me ask you. Now you see three capacitors, right? Internal, external. Internal, external. The high frequency behavior is affected by those internal one. And low frequency behavior is affected by those external one. So don't get confused, all right? So those CC1 and the CC2 and the CC represent the parasitic or the internal capacitor of the semiconductor devices. Maybe have one transistor, two, or even three transistors. Then the open circuit time constant method can give you, can give you a good approximation about the omega H. So now several steps, four steps. Step number one, I want you to take note, right? For the four steps, just quickly take note. The step number one, don't look at the VI. So set VI to zero. Set the input signal to zero. It's just short, if it's the voltage source, just short circuit the voltage source. If it's current signal, just open circuit the current signal. All right, then you will see this. So there, so, so now this is step number one. And number two is called find the open circuit resistances. Find the open circuit resistances. So you need to find the three capacitor, you need to do this three times. Two capacitor, you just need to do two times. So what's the open circuit resistances? For example, if you want to find a contribution of C1, then you open circuit the rest of the other two capacitances. The rest of the other two capacitors. So you let C2 open, 
see you three open like this. So you open circuit C2 and C3 and grab the two terminal of C1 and looking into the circuit and record it, the resistance you seen by C1 when the rest of the capacitors are open circuit. So it's called R10. You got it? And then you move on to the second capacitor, still in the step, step number two. So you open circuit one and the three. And you grab the two terminal of the C2 and look into the circuit and record the resistance you seen by C2. It's called R20. And then you move on to the final, the last capacitor, C3. So when you find, try to find the contribution of C3, then you open circuit C1 and the C2 like this. So R3 O are recording. So now step two is completed. So you got the R1 O, R2 O, and R3 O. So now you move on to step number three. You just simply sum up all the time constant. You sum up all the time constant. What does that mean? The first time constant, C1, R1, O. C1 times R1, O. The second, C2 times R2, O. The last one, C3 times R3, O. Easy, right? <laughs> the final one is easiest. What is the final one? You simply just put the, the sum, the result of th step three into the denominator. And to calculate the inverse of the sum of the time constant. That's it. That's it. You simply inverse the sum. You got from the previous step. You simply inverse the sum you got from the previous step. That's it. So four steps, which step is the key step? Inverse easy, sum easy, right? So the key step is supposed to be in the step number two. And the key st uh, step number one is sh just, just, take, just set the VI as zero to zero. So key step is to find out the R1O, R2O, and R3O. So here's the takeaway. Open circuit time constant method is an approximate, an approximate is not an exact solution, okay? It's an approximate method to estimate the upper three decibel frequency of an amplifier. When you do this, the key step, the step number one, set VI to zero. So number two, if there are three capacitor, you just open circuit two and three, and find R1O. Open circuit one, three, find, find R2O. Open circuit C1 and C2, and find R3O. So what is R3O? That's not R3, zero, okay? That's the second subscript, it's called O, O, open circuit. So the R3 is the third resistance seen by C3, when the rest of the capacitors are open circuit, are open circuit. So this is the key step. And step number three, you simply, you just take the sum of the three time constant, right? And put it in the denominator, get step number four. Take the inverse of the sum, tells you the upper three decibel frequency. So open circuit time constant method. Fourth step, the key step lies in the second step. So in the future uh, lecture video, I'm going to teach you some of the real application uh, to use this kind of apply this open circuit time constant to tackle, to quickly estimate the upper three de decibel color frequency of a certain amplifier. In the next lecture video, I'm going to teach you what is the short circuit
time constant. And what's the difference compared with the open circuit one? Thanks for watching.